Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. So for today's case I'm going to be talking to you about is the Scott Clive case. So Scott was aged 30 when he disappeared from North Shields which is Tynan Way. He's been missing since the 10th of the 10th 2002. So Scott was a labourer. Time of his disappearance was that um, he was described as white male, five foot eleven, medium build, a pale complexion, blue eyes, and dark brown hair in a short crew cut style. His teeth is slightly crooked at the front and chipped. So he was last seen wearing black Nike trainers, a black jacket. Mm -hmm blue or green jeans and a beige jumper with distinguishing feature includes half of his big toe is missing. He has a scar in his eyebrow and a mark on the centre of his brow. A skull tattoo on his lower left arm with Tamil, Shanta and Scotland written below and tattoo r.f.c on um, he was close to his family and was reported missing after no one had heard from him for several days after this scott's mother trisha asked her niece if she had seen scott scott's cousin then visited his flat but could not find him at this point she contacted the police Scott's mystery over 20 years on, mum shares missing son's tragic last letter as she begs for answers. Trying to solve the mystery of her own son's disappearance 20 years on, a murder investigation was launched despite no body being found. But the probe was called off five years later after a new witness came forward saying that they had seen someone matching Scott near the bank of the Tyne. Police told Scott's loved ones that they believed he had fallen into the river, but nobody and no proof of what had happened to Scott. His family refused to accept his death certificate and have spent the last 20 years desperately waiting for answers. On the day of his anniversary, his mother shared the last letter he had wrote, which had showed that um, he was making plans for the future. The 71-year-old said, quote, we will never get over this. Our family is broken with Scott's loss and the worst thing is that we still have no closure. When the police and they said that they were closing the case, we couldn't believe what we were hearing. To us, they had no proper proof or evidence to say that Scott had fallen in the water that night. They offered us a death certificate, which we refused. After all this time, we do believe Scott is dead but we don't accept the circumstances that the police stated. Our life has been in limbo for 20 years. The last letter I got from Scott was on September the 13th. He was sounding really cheerful and making plans for the future. Scott, whose full name was Robert Scott Clive, moved to North Shields from Strainer in Scotland, 10 months before he vanished on October the 10th, 2002. The labourer was living in a bed set on Prado Terrace in the Tyneside town, which was a lot busier than in his own town. In his final letter home, which had been dated as September 13th, Scott talked about how he was looking forward to going to see the Madness in concert in Newcastle at the end of that year. And he tells his mum how much he likes the new friends and would do anything to help me out. Scott wrote, the people that I work with are genuine friends and would do anything to help me out. Scott will readily write letters to his family and speak to his mum on the phone. So when no one heard from him for several days, he was reported missing. At first, the police treated Scott as a missing person but several weeks later, a murder inquiry was launched. Detectives made a number of public appeals for information and released CCTV images of Scott captured hours before he had vanished. They said Scott drank before the party. The last known sighting of Scott was at when he was in a custom house for single people 
in the Borough Road in North Shields, where he had been with several other people on the night of October the 10th. Seven people were arrested in connection with Scott's disappearance, but no one was ever charged. In 2008, Northumbria police detectives carried out a major review of his case. Police divers were sent into the Tyne in April of that year after a new witness came forward saying that they seen a man matching Scott's description by the edge of the river during the early hours of October the 11th, 2002. Despite not finding any trace of him in the water, detectives told Trisha that they were satisfied Scott had fallen in the river. But Scott's family still did not feel that they had any closure and believed someone must know what happened to him. Trisha said, quote, There was a lot going on that night and a lot of people were involved. We're sure that at least one of them knows what happened. There was a lot of talk going on in North Shields at this time and it still goes on now about what happened that night. 20 years have passed and still no further forward, quote, I never imagined this would go on 20 years. We're hoping somebody's conscious will be playing up and let them speak up after all this time. And in the direct appeal of people of North Shield, she added, quote, please help us find out the truth. We can't move on until we do. In 2019, the Northumbria police spokeswoman told the Chronicle any new information that came in would be followed up. She said, quote, we appreciate how difficult this has been and continues to be for Scott's family. The disappearance of Scott was subject to a full investigation at the time he first went missing, as well as a full review. The investigation was closed following new evidence that came to light in 2008, which indicated that he fallen into the time in the early hours of Friday, October the 11th, 2002. However, as with all cases, if any new information comes to light, we will of course investigate thoroughly and look to give Scott's family the closure that they deserve. Anyone with any information about Scott's disappearance should call Northumbria Police on 101. Okay then, so I did some tea leaf readings on this case and I asked the question saying, what is very specific in the area where Scott Clive is located? And we had like letters, symbols, signs, and things that is very, very specific in the area. And we had the letter H for the area name, a hand, a church, a letter N for the area name, a nail, needle, necklace, the letter N for in the area name, apple, arrow, a generic building, a building component and a cross. So I am going to be doing the tarot side of this case. These are alleged for entertainment purposes only. Okay, so the first question I'm going to ask is what happened to Scott Clive? Okay, so at first there was some sense of freedom, um, having a lot of fun, enjoying oneself. There was some happiness. There could have been a pregnancy or truth that was coming out. There had been some um, beliefs where he started to give up or you give in, either to someone or something. Okay, so there was good news that come in, um, which was either to do with a letter, phone call, um, word of mouth or email. There was two paths or some decisions and options that he needed to make. There was a plan and I feel like they may have been to do with emigrating to another place or deciding whether to stay or go.
there was some loneliness, paranoia, isolation, um, being antisocial and restrictive. There was some manipulation, trickery and deception. There was some courage, bravery and confidence and trying to take full control. Um, there may have been some influence involved and persuasion. There was a male that was very stubborn, um, that lacked discipline, that may have been an absent father or had some paternity issues. Okay, there was a breakthrough. Um, new ideas and new plans that came in, releasing some truths. There were some secrets, um, deception, insecurity here. They were sh shedding the old person, making themselves new. Um, they was letting go of people here, letting go of possessions or issues. There was either indecision, delays, postponements, um, lies being exposed. Who was involved in the disappearance of Scott Hyde? Okay, so there may have been a female that was very overbearing, um, maybe a bit negligent. Someone from the past, um, there was maturity, growing up and leaving home. There was um, either bad business or financial management. There's addiction, depression, mental health, secrecy, obsession. Dependency, cheating, um, abuse, violence, or an assault. Where does Scott play? Okay, so there's arrogance, recklessness, um, showing off. Um, collaborating with someone or involved in teamwork. There's a marriage, commitment or religion or some knowledge or education. Is hesitancy and missed opportunities. Either working for charity um, or doing something in the community. There may be assistance or support. What is the final outcome for the Scott Close case? Okay, so there is unhappy home, um, a broken home or dysfunctional home. A man that's very wealthy, um, successful, high status, thriving with stability and security. There's trying to find balance in all certain aspects of life.
it is someone that's very immature, insecure, lack of trust. Someone's very rebellious, impulsive, direct and honest. Okay then, so that is what I have for the Scott Clyde case. So, like I said, these are alleged for entertainment purposes only. And this is the end for this case. So I will see you in the next reading. Um, take care and I see you again soon. Bye bye.